सिग्नल एनर्जी एंड एनर्जी स्पेक्ट्रल डेंसिटी so in this video we would be looking into the signal energy and how it relates with the energy spectral density so let us start with the signal which is g of t and this is an energy signal so as we can find the energy of this signal <coughs> that is minus infinity to infinity g of t whole square dt we have uh, used the absolute square because we are considering that this signal belongs to complex numbers so this is a well known definition of finding the energy of a given signal so next we can expand this so we would have minus infinity to infinity g conjugate of t g of t dt now since this is a scalar so g conjugate of t g of t so this is equivalent to g of t g conjugate of t so in the third equality we will use the definition of inverse fourier transform so that is we have a minus infinity to infinity from g of t now we have g of f e to the power plus j 2 pi f t and since we need it in t so this is df now we'll take this integration outward and have g of f and then again we would have this d of f but note that we are missing this d of t we have a d of t over here now we bring this integration inward and this g conjugate of t the remaining part of original integration that was e to the power plus j 2 pi f t and this dt so next we have again g of f and we use a bracket to include the inner integration but now we take the conjugate of it that is we have now g of t e to the power minus j 2 pi f t so this plus sign changes to a minus sign and again we have inward dt and outward df so note that this simply is a definition of fourier transform so we have g of f conjugate minus infinity to infinity g of f df and from here now we have minus infinity to infinity g of f absolute whole square df now this is a well known parsevals theorem now with this proof of parsevals theorem we have two ways in which we can find the energy of a given signal now in the second of that eg that is the energy of g so within the integration so the absolute value of g of f whole square this is referred to as phi g of f and that is nothing but the energy spectral density so considering that we have a spectrum and we take the square of it and plot it so integrating from minus infinity to plus infinity is going to yield the energy of our signal but the question is why do we need to look into the frequency domain to find the energy so the answer is 
that in time domain so we always find the total energy of a given signal which of course we can find from in the frequency domain from minus infinity to infinity but we can also find the energy in a given bandwidth say we define a bandwidth b and we are interested in this bandwidth the energy in this bandwidth so from this expression now we would have e with respect to this essential bandwidth eb so this is now integrating from the upper limit is b and so but for this bandwidth we also consider this region that is from minus b to b so while the bandwidth is this the integration is from minus b to b that is we have to consider this region in estimating the essential bandwidth so this is phi g of f df so that is we can now find the energy over a particular band rather than the total signal from here to here so this is achieved in the frequency domain and it was not possible in the time domain now as a special case if we consider that g of t belongs to real signals so in that case we have essential bandwidth which is equivalent to 0 to b but for real signal the spectrum or the energy spectral density is an even function so we can multiply a 2 over here so we have phi g of f df so in this way we can find the energy of a given signal now let us take one example and now we have a signal g of t which is a real signal and it is equivalent to e raised to the power minus a t u of t this is a very standard exponential signal this is our g of t now let us find the energy of this signal so if we are finding the energy of this signal in time domain that is in t domain so we have minus infinity to infinity g of t absolute whole square or whole square because this is just a real signal dt so we would have this u of t would bring the lower limit to 0 and we have e raised to the minus 2 at dt so this gives us simply minus 1 over 2 a and then e raised to the power minus 2 at with t limit that is 0 to infinity so this is simply 1 over 2a now again if we find this by means of frequency so we have from Parseval's theorem g of f whole square df so we have to take the Fourier transform of this signal now the Fourier transform of this signal g of f this is simply 1 over a plus j 2 pi f and this concludes that g of f, f absolute square is simply 1 over a square plus 2 pi f whole square so hence we have minus infinity to infinity 1 over a square plus 2 pi f whole square df now using trigonometric properties we can simplify this as 1 over 2 pi a 10 inverse 2 pi f by a with uh, the range that is minus infinity to infinity so therefore we have 1 over 2 pi a 10 inverse 
infinity if you put infinity in f and then minus 10 inverse of minus infinity now this can be converted into simply 2 times 10 inverse of infinity because you can bring out this minus outward uh, because this is a even function and this is simply 2 times pi by 2 and we have 2 pi a this 2 cancels with this 2 and this pi cancels with this pi so eventually we have 1 over 2a and this is in agreement with this expression so finding the energy in both time domain and frequency domain is same so next say we extend this example and we are interested in an essential bandwidth which covers 95% of total energy so that is in a spectrum we are interested in a bandwidth which starts at 0 and it goes until B but the total energy is 95% so we can solve that by suggesting that the essential bandwidth is nothing but 0 0.95 that is the 95% of total energy so we have already calculated this in both time and frequency so this is simply 0 0.95 times 1 over 2a now this can only be redone by means of frequency domain so we again utilize the same process that we have done over here but now change the limits from minus b to b because we are interested in this bandwidth so we are going to integrate from minus b to b so in the same expression now this would change to minus b and this to b plus b and again minus b and over here this will be plus b so eventually this expression will now read as a b equal to 1 over 2 pi a 2 times 10 inverse 2 pi b by a now equating this 1 and 2 so we have 1 over 2 pi a 2 times 10 inverse 2 pi b by a so this is equivalent to 0 0.95 by 2a so now everything is known except this value b so we can have a b which is approximately equal to simply 2a so note that we are going to bring this 10 inverse on the other side and then we have to solve it so this is our essential bandwidth that is 2a which covers 95 percent of the total energy